You're listening to Paris' State of Mind on Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Radio. Welcome to Paris, a state of mind. Join us as we talk about the good, the bad, the ins, the outs of property rentals and purchases in and around Paris. We'll have topics for renters, owners, and visitors, share questions we are regularly asked, and more. My name is Gail Boisclair of Perfectly Paris, and my co-host is Marie Pistinier of Lokim Paris Be a Part of It. Both of us are proud members of the SPLM, the first representative body of furnished rental professionals. Hello, my dear friend, Marie. How are you? Hey, Gail. How are you doing? I'm still always uh, feeling good, so and it's always a pleasure to, to talk with you. Well, you're feeling good, like I knew that you would. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, we actually have a very special guest talking with us, and we're going to be talking about something very important in all apartments, and it's cleaning. So with us today, our very special guest is Karim Bukhari, and his company is Paris Suite Services. Karim, tell us a bit about your company and how long you've been in business and what you guys do. Hello, Gail. Hello, Mary. Well, I started Paris Suite Services 13 years ago, specializing in all the logistics of short-term rentals, so the cleaning, the linen, the maintenance, primarily, and then we extend it to check-ins as well. But our majority of the business is in uh, cleaning, whether it's uh, short-term rentals or long-term rentals after people stayed for a year or two years or three years. Different processes, different type of people as well. We manage about 1,500 apartments in Paris now. Wow. And you also have a business in the south of France as well. Isn't that right? Yes, absolutely. We also in uh, Antibes, Cannes, Nice, a uh, much smaller operation, different type of properties since we are mainly dealing with uh, villas, different challenges as well. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. So, so it's not only apartments. Gail and I are very used to talk about apartments, but it's any type of house that, that you can deal with. Yes, absolutely. And uh, it can go from, even for Paris, I mean, we we clean from 10, 12, 15 square meters to three, four, 500 square meters apartment. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's in, I wish to view a, a 500 square meters apartment. I don't, I don't <laughs> believe I had the chance yet to do that. We have a 450 square meter three bedroom apartment. Wow. Nice. In the seventh. So the main rooms, like the living, should must be huge. Like you can ice skate uh, yeah. on your uh, between the sofa and the and yeah. the dining table. The kitchen is an apartment. Okay. Wow. I'm sure they must have the whole floor. <laughs> yeah, they do exactly. So when we talk about cleaning, because most of the owners, uh, are, first, one of the question was, uh, should I pass through a property manager or not? Some of them wants to do that on their own. And uh, when it comes to cleaning, there is always uh, the question of uh, to which company I should uh, go with, or should I just deal with people I randomly know by, you know, from people to people like word to mouth? Of course, you are a company, so you would advise to go through a pro, but what will, you, will be your, your warnings about maybe going directly with non-official uh, cleaners? Well, first of all, it's totally legal. And behind that, even if you go through a person directly, technically it's illegal. I mean, you literally can uh, go to jail in France. So that's why all the people that we have are hired by the company, employed on a long-term basis what we call CDIs, uh, but you can take many risks by, uh, by going uh, directly through a person. The person fails during the, the cleaning because she's cleaning a window. She does not, she's not trained properly. She's going to use a chair instead of using a ladder. Uh, she's going to clean some windows and falls, breaks her hip. Who is responsible? You are. It's a matter of trust as well because... Hiring someone uh, that does not have an insurance breaks something valuable 
or not, you clean a glass mirror and it's not attached properly and it fails and breaks. Who's going to pay for it? And so on and so on. So my my recommendation is even if you can actually take a person from the moment that they are self-employed, but that they are able to give you a bill and a copy of their insurance uh, document. Back in the days, yeah, we were all uh, using as a building lady or a friend or, or whoever, but I'm going to use strong word. For me, it's kind of modern slavery because uh, employing people without declaring them removes uh, the fact that they are not going to have paid holidays. They are not going to have the company pay for their retirement plan, uh, reimburse their ticket for their monthly Navigo pass, and so on and so on. Medical, the annual medical visits that we have to pay to make sure that they don't have a hidden disease or a hidden medical uh, condition, or that they actually can see what they are doing. So... Yeah, for me, uh, I would not consider uh, employing someone without declaring that. I had no idea that they had to have an annual medical exam, actually. But it seems logical as well, since it's a physically laborious job. And uh, yeah, like you said, if they can't see. Actually, to be perfectly precise, it's every two years, okay? But you have to pay the medical visit annually. Yeah, that's a little thing when you do have employee. <laughs> yes, yeah. And you're very happy when you have to pay for medical visits that are like 100 euro per person. And uh, you have 25 <laughs> or 30 employees. And mm-hmm. actually, legally, they don't have to go every year. Anyway, that's another subject. <laughs> so um, we clear the, the fact that you shouldn't go uh, like with only water mass unless you do have someone who can actually give some bills and insurance. And uh, I guess that we have to ask for the proper insurance. We already had a a topic about insurances in general for owners, for tenants, for vacation and everything. And we know that there is a lot of different things. So we have to make sure that this is the correct one. Yes, it's called the Responsabilité Civile. Okay. In case they damage something, uh, well, it's covered by the insurance. I mean, for example, I was talking about breakage. We, by cleaning apartments... You end up breaking things, not on purpose, obviously. Yeah, of course. But it's only people that don't do anything that don't break anything. So obviously, it had happened that we broke things, and no problem. I mean, we we reimbursed, replaced. End of story. No discussion. We are insured. It depends what is broken, but either we go through the insurance or not. For, for the little story, uh, we broke a twenty thousand euro vase. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> were you able to buy at a friend's place? Oh, and were you able to do that with the with the insurance? Was it insured properly? Twenty thousand, yes, we definitely go through the insurance. <laughs> but uh, you know, a, a coffee pot can break uh, when you clean in it. You can break. Um, I mean, little things. It can be little things, but it can also be big things. And I guess, like uh, getting out of the legality, what type of systems do you have in place when you do have then the cleaner? How does it work on your end? Well, first we have a hiring process. Uh, We do hire quite a lot of people through uh, the existing staff uh, referrals. We actually pay uh, when cleaner sends us someone that we end up hiring. They actually do have a bonus declared. Oh, nice. Yeah, because cleaning apartments is extremely specific. For example, uh, at some stage, we we were really looking into, we were like, oh, let's hire pe- cleaners coming from the hotel industry. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's obvious, yeah, right? They, they should know how to clean and, and things like that. But not really. And actually, I won't say they are the worst people to hire, don't get me wrong, but they are trained to clean the same type of room over and over and over. They have a gouvernante that is going to control every floor every day. So basically, they know how to use cleaning products. But if you are not on their back all the time, they are not going to notice that why are there bubbles uh, on this wall? That means there is a leak. 
because what is very important for a lot of owners that actually do not live in Paris or where the apartment is located is the cleaning and the maintenance crew are the eyes and legs of the the people. They are the the cleaners are the one that are going to report all the issues, problems, breakage, cushions that are stained, uh, TVs that are broken or whatever. They are the one to report that. So uh, they do need to be specifically trained to actually catch all the little things. What are the little things that, uh, you know, you, you open the cupboard under the sink and, oh, it smells like mold. Why it shouldn't smell like mold? That triggers pictures, a phone call to, uh, to the general uh, gouvernante, and so on and so on. And this is all the specific training that we need to provide to our staff in order for them to be able to report any little thing that is not perfectly in proper order is going to be reported. Yeah, so this is probably something like a lot of time uh, we hear owners who say, okay, your cleaning fees are pretty expensive. We, I don't understand why, because even though when they hire someone they declared, but they say it costs me less and, and, and everything. So, yes, yeah, this is one of the things that we can tell owner that it's not only someone who is going to mop the floor, but it's going to go way above, uh, above the, um, the little details. Absolutely. What type of question usually the owners are asking when you deal directly with owners and not with property managers? What are the, the big objections that you can face when you are suggesting your, your company? You, you mentioned it, the prices. Mm -hmm. Because it, our price includes the cleaning products. We use professional cleaning products. We switched uh, to uh, Propter and Gamble professional cleaning problems. Because, for example, I had several cleaners uh, saying, oh, I'm itchy uh, for the past two weeks. My hands are itchy or I'm coughing uh, and so on and so on. And actually, we noticed that one of the products we were using was provoking allergies. So we actually switched. And at the same time we switched, we, we decided to switch to, to Propter and Gamble Pro. But those, those products are First, of course, much more efficient, but they're much more expensive. But we provide them. So, for example, when you clean a, an apartment or house that has been occupied for a year or two years, obviously, the cleaning is totally different than for someone that is staying four nights. The person staying four nights is not going to cook a roast every weekend. Uh, they are not going to use a kitchen as intensively as someone that stays for a year or two. Well, if you're the owner, you have to buy every single product to actually be able to cover all of that. Try to clean a shower that hasn't been cleaned properly for a year in Paris, where the water is so hard. You can try Antical, which everybody raves about. Okay, well, try it. For your weekly cleaning, fine. For something that has been uh, stuck for a year, it's not going to work. Yeah, I can, I mean... I actually, for my shower with, I don't use like the anti-cal or whatever. I literally though use my little shower, the French call it a raclette, the little shower scraper thing every single day, because if you don't. And don't mix that with your uh, raclette food. This is absolutely oh. not the same. <laughs> mm, it's almost lunchtime. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> We can all have a raclette. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a raclette in my shower after I've cleaned it with the raclette. But don't put your raclette in on the shower because then Karim's team is going to be crazy. About <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. I guess the cheese would be hard to get off the <laughs> shower walls. <laughs> all right. Okay. Always the clown. But no, that's interesting about all the products. Uh, what about things like linen? How do you handle linen? Would you suggest, because sometimes the owners are saying, okay, I have this bunch of linen that I can reuse to, for, for my, my vacation rental home. So what would be your, your, your tips on that? Well, just ask them how happy they would like to sleep in someone else's bedding uh, that has been in the closet for the past 15 years. <laughs> I personally <laughs> prefer to have nice, pressed, white stainless uh, linen and uh, fluffy white towels, razors and passed out colors uh, towels that are all itchy when you use them and that are not absorbent. If you're enjoying this episode of Paris, A State of Mind, you may also be interested in our sister podcast, 
Storytime in Paris. Join Jennifer as she asks five questions to authors who've been inspired by Paris. Paris, a state of mind, will be right back after a word from our sponsors. And now back to Paris, a state of mind. As many owners, you know, they want to personalize their apartments and uh, they want to do it their way, uh, which is fine. Then, you know, some owners are going to say, I want the curtains open. Others are going to say, I want the curtain closed and I want the bed set up like this and I want 16 pillows on it and so on and so on. At the end of the day, what people want is to have the same qualities that they would have in a hotel. You know, it's always funny when owners are saying, oh, yeah, we'll use our linen. And when you do the cleaning, you wash the, the linen in uh, the washing machine and, and dry it. And, well, it doesn't look good. And not only that, the time it takes. The combination machines. It looks like you've slept on the linen, rolled around on it, like for two days. Yeah. It looks horrible. So you have the look. But the worst is... You have no time to wash it at 60 or 90 degrees. Yeah. So it is not, it is not actually clean. Sterilized. It's actually not cleaned. You know, I mean, you do, you're going to do, they will do that, you know, 30 minutes uh, cycle at uh, 20 or 30 degrees. You're not cleaning anything. So that's why we, we provide linen. Uh, and I'm not saying that <laughs> I'm not hammering uh, owner's linen being washed on side, uh, but we do provide linen that uh, owners or agencies are actually renting from us. And they don't have to invest in zillions of sets because if you want to use your own linen, you need four or five sets to actually uh, set up one bed. Because if you have people that are staying for two or three weeks, they are going to use one, two or three sets. And when you come back uh, for the cleaning, you don't have any sets left in the cupboards. So it takes a lot of space as well. It's a big investment. You need to upgrade your linen every two, three, four years, uh, sometime less, uh, because they wash it with their own clothes and it discolored or they use bleach and it stains and stuff like that. You do need to, uh, the option of using uh, rental linen is cost effective as well in the sense that it's actually cheaper to use our rental linen than to actually send the linen to the pressing and we get it back the following week. And the advantage too is that if you're sending, either using your own linen, sending it to a pressing or washing, imagine somebody spilt, I don't know, coffee all over the linen and they can't get the stain out. Then at least each time it's a fresh new thing. It's at the end of the day, it's not the owner's problem if there's a stain on the linen. They just get brand new, fresh linen each time. Yes, right, absolutely. Uh, and actually, it's a big growing part of our business, the rental linen. Uh, this year, we, we increased tremendously our activity uh, through the linen delivery because it's a big request by owners and agencies. I have an agency I will not name. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you you probably uh, know uh, the girl that is managing it, and uh, she used to use our service, decided to use her own linen, and uh, six months ago she came back to us asking to can we use PSS linen again? Yeah, using professional linen is it, it offers such a much higher level of quality when you arrive in the apartment and everything is white and washed properly and ironed properly. It, it really gives freshness to, uh, to, to the apartment. Yeah, definitely. Do you do that also for like medium stays and long stays or only for vacation rentals? Okay, we have a policy that the linen uh, must turn around at least once a month. So as long as every month we can deliver fresh linen, take out the old linen, Normally, it's even every two weeks, actually. But every two weeks, we deliver fresh linen, we get the dirty linen, and every two weeks, we, we cycle like that. So, yes, we can, we can do it on long-term uh, stays. You do have to deal with the tenant, so he can make the meeting with you, get the, give you the linen and everything. Yeah, but, you know, most of the apartments that we handle the, the service for, uh, we do have the keys. So uh, it's, a, it's just a matter of organizing it, and it's pretty, it's pretty simple. 
as far as the, the tenant agrees on having someone coming in when he's not there, it's uh, and having making sure that he leaves you the bag of uh, the bag of linen. Yeah, it's just an organization at the beginning. We explain you you drop the leave the dirty linen at the entrance of the apartment. That trust is another reason why to use a, a company like ours uh, is because we know that the people that we are going to send in an apartment that is actually occupied, uh, they're not going to go through the personal belong- belongings or anything like that. Okay. Do you have funny stories of like cleaning things? Like, I don't know, uh, what happens? Like, do you Like the worst come in? request you had or the, the... Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the weirdest way the apartment, wo- an apartment or a villa was or like a... Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were, once I received the call someone asking us to go and clean an apartment in the seventh at the seventh floor and he says you would also need to bring down the sofa to dispose of it and then he says there's only one thing on the sofa actually someone died on the sofa (gasps) and they find out only like 15 months later oh Oh my gosh (laughs) a raw story well, we, we, we didn't take the job, obviously. Yeah, because is it, I mean, don't you need to have some specific thing to do, to, yeah. to, to dispose some items like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. In that time, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a decontamination team for, yeah. for this kind of thing. This is very specific. Okay, I think that this is one of the top stories. Do you have others? Yeah. You know what? I could, seriously, I could write a book. What's one of the funniest things? The people that left with the cleaner's phone in their bag. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. you know? I actually one time was at a bar with uh, friends get together and things like that. And uh, when I left, I put my phone in the bag and I'm walking away and I'm hearing this phone ring. And I was like, that's weird. I must have changed my ringer. And I pull out the phone and it's not my phone. Uh, so I answered and I'm like, Hello. <laughs> it's like uh, who who is this? I said, Gail, who is this? This is so and so. You have Forrest's phone. And I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. And I reached in my bag and I said, Apparently I have two phones. Anyway, I guess it can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It can happen. We oh I'm trying to remember how they call that uh, Dionysos Dionysis uh, disease, where people just accumulate things. Oh, oh gosh. like hoarders, hoarders. And yeah, we did one apartment like that. It's a, it's a compulsive disease. Like people like keep on stuffing things and they cannot yeah. get rid of things. Yeah, we did one apartment like that. I don't know how many days, days for one bedroom uh, apartment, huh? days. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's so many, there's so many stories. We were talking about this 450 square meters apartment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when you have to, beautiful property. That's not the point. But when you have these high hands uh, people and, you know, they're going to say, oh, we, we live in November 10. So you organize two cleaners for eight hours each uh, to take care of this apartment. You are going to select the cleaners that you are going to send because we have cleaners that are more detailed oriented, others that are going to do heavy jobs. And and then you arrive uh, on the tents and they say, oh no no, we're actually oh we forgot to tell you, uh, we 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 leaving tomorrow, and um, my my daughter is actually visiting the next day. <laughs> okay. Of course, of course. Yeah, no uh, we have a magic ad that's a, a, a lot of our clients think that we are magicians, and that that we have a magic ad. We pull cleaners like this. Up, how many you want? Five, six, when? For two net, this afternoon, sure. Yeah. Then, I think that people don't realize the planning that's involved with all of that and coordinating. Uh, and then I imagine like when you're planning a clean, that you have to try to figure out, okay, this cleaner um, has two or three cleans to do today. So we're going to put them all on apartments that are kind of in a similar area yeah. to reduce travel time, I imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. So organization, uh, the planification takes days, uh, literally. That's why the earlier someone needs a cleaning, the better it is. At PSS, we, we send our cleaners planning the Friday for the following week. 
So if you contact us on Saturday or Sunday for the following week, and it's always like that people want a morning cleaning. Yeah, but the morning slots are always the first one to be filled. Well, all I can say is I'm glad that I don't have to do all the planning for all of that because that's pretty crazy. Thank you so much, Kareem. It really, I think, I'm sure that a lot of people are going to listen to this episode and think, wow, I had no idea all the behind the scenes stuff for cleaning. It was really informative. Don't you think, Marie? Yes, and I think that we could go on for like an ad- an additional hour without a problem <laughs> if we go into the, the all the little steps, not talking about maintenance, that will be probably one of the next episodes. Yeah. Thank you again, Karim. Thanks again. See all of you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Paris, A State of Mind, featuring Gail of Perfectly Paris and Marie of Lokim, both who are founding members of the SPLM. Paris, A State of Mind is produced by Paris Underground Radio. The music, Jazz in Paris, is by Media Right Productions. For more information on this show and others, go to parisundergroundradio.com. This episode of Paris, A State of Mind was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Paris Underground Radio.